between space and time, there is a place, the Archive of Awesome, an ancient vault that guards the most amazing stories and myths. Each book, a magical gateway to the paperverse. Let me take you on a journey through the seven masterpieces. It's time to return to game.
mated cadavers are capable of experiencing only the most base effect, hunger. Who can imagine a less meaningful existence? Their bodies are still decomposing, so it's recommended to keep them at a distance as the gases they produce are of the deadliest kind. Fortunately, they also smell awful, which serves as a warning. Just like the stench of charlatanry emanating from the fortune teller's wagon. Animated cadavers. Few living souls then. Few li Ah, so you came across a runic card. You're wise to ask me about it. Let me explain. Cards like these have no inherent properties of their own, but professionals like myself can still use them to enhance other cards. Now, this kind of craft requires subtlety and caution. So whenever you find more of these, keep up that resolute attitude of yours and bring them straight to me. Don't bother talking to the sage about them. His methods are as ancient as his jokes.
die! been busy too while you were away. The fortune teller is teaching me her craft, and I... challenge and a chance to use my knowledge for the good. These mystical cards aren't used to cheat and get money from the hopeless and naive, so of course the fortune-telling woman knows nothing about them. However, the true scholars of the arcane, like the hermits of the eastern wilds, sometimes pass their secrets to those they deem worthy, like myself. You should know that despite their modest look, such objects can hold powerful enchantments with remarkable properties. Still, as long as their wondrous attributes remain unknown, they are completely useless. Consider yourself fortunate, as I will identify them for you. These creatures are made of stone, which makes them extremely resilient to elements. Fire, frost, or poison cannot harm them. Their abilities are fascinating. When harmed, they petrify and lie in slumber for thousands of years, slowly regenerating. All adventurers should be warned that statues may not be what they seem. Some scholars claim that gargoyles carry a trace of demonic blood, like that charlatan woman, although it's much more obvious in her case. Finally, a challenge.
is as kind as she is strong, and these two qualities rarely go hand in hand. She's been caring for me as if we were family, and not once has she complained. I've visited dozens of inns, and believe me, such places are to any village what a hearth is to a house. If the innkeeper has a stout heart, none despair even if the times are dire. That's what she does for this community, if you ask me. Unfortunately, she seems to have befriended that woman, and even learns her craft. That which corrupts everything she touches. So just to be on the safe side, I'm guarding this well.
Ugh. Thank <laughs> you. 
of man.
When I was still a young monk, we used to jest that dull brothers excel in copying holy texts, and those with any wit left became master brewers. <laughs> uh, uh, it does not sound very amusing now, but it would bring us to tears back then. Monastic life can be very monotonous, you see. Regardless, potion brewing was our specialty. It required hours of prayer and meditation. Nowadays, even a barmaid can procure a potent mixture with one hand while stuffing a turkey with the other. And the magical cards allow you to use objects that you don't even have to carry. You might think that as a man devoted to matters of the spirit, I may object to the methods of the fortune teller. Normally, this would be true, but in such dire times, when darkness threatens the light, we need all to use their talents to oppose evil. I believe her gifts are a godsend. When evil strikes you down in the dungeons, it takes a lot of my effort to deliver your soul from the clutches of darkness. Death always takes its toll, so any equipped cards remain at your grave and so will grant you no aid until you retrieve them. Also, some ingredients collected in the arcane cauldron perish, as spells and elixir are mere tricks in the light of the divine. When evil strikes you down in the dungeons, it takes a lot of my effort. Remember how when we were kids, we used to sneak into the cathedral and bother the monks in the scriptorium? Poor guys were completely helpless and couldn't even yell at us until they chased us outside. Those were happier times. But now, with all the evil creatures down there... Remember the smith? People think he left because of the fortune teller. But I know the true story. You see... The monster snatched his wife and son and dragged them into the dungeons. He followed them and found a terrible place. A kitchen, where demons cook human flesh for their master. Can you imagine seeing your loved ones prepared into a stew? Or even worse, black pudding? He managed to come back and tell us all about it. But his mind was unhinged by grief. The next night, he vanished for good. Do you remember how we used to play, lying in the grass, watching the clouds and guessing our future from their shapes? We saw many strange things, 
but I never suspected what fate had in store for us. Running an inn isn't that bad. At least, it wasn't until the dark rituals. Now, everyone's afraid of being eaten by some nasty creature. Some people even ponder suicide. And just look at our garden. We used to grow all sorts of vegetables and herbs. But now, the soil is poisoned with dark magic, and demons trample everything with their hooves. Ah, but complaining doesn't make anything better. I still get a lot of help from the sage. He may be cranky at times, but he's always treated me like a daughter. And then there's the fortune teller. She's a fascinating woman, and I'm very lucky to learn from her. And now you're back.
Perhaps you have noticed there seems to be some antipathy between the sage and the fortune teller? You would do well to pay no heed to what they say about each other. Old age brings many burdens that can make one's heart bitter. As for their adventurous tales, I have yet to see any evidence of their deeds, so I'm afraid the passing years might have weakened their minds, which now drift towards the fantastical. Who knows? They might even believe in the things they're describing so vividly. Hmm... Now that I think of it, their quarrels might be a facade. Years spent in the monastery made me quite observant, so either I'm growing old too, or they might have something more going on.